With the math background, we can now describe some of the most widely used public key algorithms. The first is RSA, named after its inventors. R Beckham. RSA is the most widely used public key algorithm and one of the very first. RSA supports both public key encryption and digital signature. The security strength of RSA is based on the hypothesis that factoring a very large number into two primes is a very hard problem. That is, given a large number, it is computationally very hard to factor it into two primes. RSA can support variable key lengths. In practice, most people use a key length of 1024 bits or 2048 bits or even 4096 bits. The plain text length can also be variable. In RSA, every data is treated as an integer because we can interpret any data with bits of 1 and 0 as an integer. And the requirement here is that the plain text input has to be smaller in integer value than the key. The size of ciphertext is the same as the key length. This summarizes the RSA algorithm. The first step is key generation. First, we select two prime numbers, P and Q. Say each of them are at least 512 bits long. And then we compute P times Q. The result is N. And while we have P and Q, we also compute totion N, which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1, because both P and Q are prime numbers. Then we select an integer E that is relatively prime to totion N. After we have selected E, we find the multiplicative inverse of E mod totion N. Having computed N, E, and D, now we can forget about P and Q and forget about totion N. The public key is E and N. The private key which we have to keep to ourselves and secure it, is DNN. Now for encryption. Suppose Alice has published her public key, and Bob wishes to send a message, M, to Alice, and he wants only Alice to be able to read M. So Bob obtains Alice's public key, and to encrypt message M, Bob computes M raised to the power of E mod N. For decryption, on receipt of this ciphertext C, Alice would use her own private key D and compute C raised to the power of D mod N. And this would result in the original plain text M. The property of RSA guarantees that only Alice can decrypt this message because only she has a private key that's paired with the public key that was used to encrypt the message. Again, every user can publish his or her own public key and keep his or her own private key securely to himself or herself. To encrypt message to a user, say Alice, Bob will obtain Alice's public key and compute the ciphertext by raising the plain text to the power of E mod N. To decrypt, Alice will use her own private key to raise the ciphertext to the power of D and then mod N. What about creating digital signature? Alice will use her own private key to raise the message M to the power of D mod N. To verify, Bob would get Alice's public key, raise the signature to the power of E and mod N, and this will produce the original message M and verify the signature. Again here, the property of RSA guarantees that Bob would know that the signature was created by Alice because only she has the private key that is paired with the public key that Bob was able to use to verify the signature.